Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. All right, chef. Let me show you Armenian traditions. Let's do this. This is the way to do it. Wow. Cheers. The breaking bread. Nice. That is breaking bread. Los Angeles is the ground zero of the Armenian immigrant experience on the West Coast. Armenian food is ancient and delicious. It's been around forever. But like, what are typical Armenian ingredients? Being an Armenian means multicultural. A lot of Middle Eastern food, Greek food. Armenians in Los Angeles come from about 80 places. All over the world. Here you go. Ah! We're making octopus sharma. Octopus sharma? This bread is delicious. 3,000 year old. Enjoy it. Have dolmas there and dolmas here. Dolmas everywhere. Yeah, I'm going to make it rain with pomegranate. Yes, nice. please. That is beautiful. I've never tasted anything like this. This is one of the most traditional dishes, the khash. Khash. You got to yeah, yeah, give yeah. it the A sense of personal pride in your food is amazing. If we didn't have the connection with our food and our culture, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have survived. What are some of the characters that we know, like, all Armenians are? We are all survivors, and that mentality brings us together like a family. Food is definitely the way that Armenians keep telling their story. I need somebody to taste. This is the all Armenian barbecue sauce. I'll give it all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a tough crowd. <laughs> I'm Chef Marcus Samson, and as an immigrant born in Ethiopia and raised in Sweden, food to me has always told a deeper, more personal story. It's a path to culture, identity, and history. Join me on a new journey across the country to learn more about America's immigrant communities and culinary traditions to see how food connects us all. When I think people think about LA around the world, there is a mythology there. You think about stars and Hollywood, movies and big dreams. But I don't think most people understand Hollywood is also a neighborhood. When I think about Hollywood, I think about the great ethnic food that is there. The small strip malls that you're never sure what's gonna be behind that door. Would you go from Filipino town to Thai town? But one of the biggest communities that still might be unknown to a lot of people is the Armenian community. So Armenia geographically is the Caucasus region. So it's part of the former Soviet Union. What's interesting about Armenia is there are only 3 million people actually living in Armenia, and the 7 million that are living in the diaspora spread out in over 100 countries. Armenians in Los Angeles is actually the largest group outside Armenia. You grew up in Los Angeles. How old were you when you came? I was four and a half years old when we came from yeah. the former Soviet Armenia. Yeah. East Hollywood is the ground zero of the Armenian immigrant experience on the West Coast. Today, East Hollywood is known as almost Titan, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's changed from Little Armenia yes. to Titan, but still there are some iconic shops left Absolutely. here, right? Absolutely, and we're going to one right now. So Eric Nazarian is a filmmaker and photojournalist. So he actually came to Los Angeles mm -hmm. to work in the film industry, part telling the Armenian community stories, but also just grand big stories. This is LA for me, yeah. right? These mini malls, sure. these amazing entrepreneurial, you know, people coming with dreams. Everybody Ooh. comes here fighting to survive. Yeah. Multiple jobs for their kids to have what they never yes. had. Yes. You yeah. know, all these working class neighborhoods, you know, were born with the sweat of immigrants. This is where we're at. We're in the heart of the Armenian first community here on the West Coast. We're gonna walk into one of the oldest, oldest establishments, the last of the Mohicans of little Armenia right here. Sahag's Basturma. 
Basturma, uh, what is it? Where does it come from? It's basically the Armenian version of the brazola. Okay. And it's pressed meats, Preserved. incredibly well it garnished can stay with garlic. Forever. Yeah. You will fight off every single vampire around the world because yeah. there's a lot of garlic here. Nice. When you think about Sahak, it's one of those strip malls that you've driven by a million times and never paid any attention. And inside there is a master craftsman, Harry. Harry's family has been in the pasturma business for over 300 years. And here he is in Los Angeles, tucked in. You walk into his walk-in, and I look up in the ceiling, and right away you see, there it is. This is so beautiful! Oh my god! This is where the magic happens. Yeah? Right here. It's amazing. I love this. It's like 500 years tradition in here. They all same size. Yeah. Do you know how much work it takes to butcher like that? It's unbelievable. It's like a piece of art. It's craftsmanship at the highest level. There you go. I love the fact that Shaq was in here getting his basuma on. That's when you know you got it. Because he's a big man, he's so a Shaq. <laughs> That's a good look. And here's the master. Wow. This is sujuk and this is bastur. So where does it come from? So Western Armenia, which is the cradle of Armenian civilization. So today's Turkey. Today's, yes, Eastern Turkey Eastern. Mm -hmm. is Western Armenia. And his family is from Kesaria, yeah. which is modern-day Kayseri in Turkey, the one that makes the best basturma. Yeah. So if Hollywood is the entertainment capital yeah. of the world, then the basturma capital of the world is Kayseri, yeah? Oh, okay. According yes. to Mr. Yeah, I love it. That's that what it is. How many days did it take to make basturma? At least 15 days. In Karzikov, in he thinks his way is the right way. Yeah, of course. I should. <laughs> He's the boss. He must show Kayuna, in Chikasens. Yeah. He does, you don't have this in the market. Yeah, and all the flavors are right there. That's it's beautiful. A, it's a very, it's a, it's a worker's craft. It's a worker's trade. You have to work. It's physical, and you have to do it with love. You see, it's very transparent. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know? His rivals say he paints the bastard, but. <laughs> <laughs> He went to Caesarea, Kayseri, to kind of visit the cradle of his yeah. family and to basically Beautiful. go back to his roots. And he found out his paternal grandmother's sure. family also were in the Basturma trade. It's a very wow. long, deep-rooted lineage yeah. of doing this work and passing it down generation after generation. Yeah. It's the preservation sure. of your narrative to kind of avoid being forgotten. Does the next generation of Armenians, do they know how to make Basturma? Good question. After me, I don't know. Because my son is a uh, pharmacist. Pharmacist, yeah. Are you teaching anybody in your family? My son knows. Your son know. knows? Yes. Oh, good. Good. This is important. This is his family, Basturma makers. You see the cuts hanging on the back? Yeah, Basturma. yeah, sure. And it's beautiful to think the tradition hasn't changed. It's still yeah. the same process, right? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, you see 1900 and 118 years later, you have the yeah. same, you know, workmanship. Jonathan Gold was right. Basturma boss. Basturma boss. It's good. It's a good. It's a good, good title. So the Armenian community really started in East Hollywood, known as Little Armenia. But if you keep driving sort of east, then you get to the real capital today, Glendale. The signs are all written in Armenian language. The restaurants, the schools, the theaters, the culture completely turns. English becomes the minority, and Armenian becomes the majority. Hello, Marcus. What's up, how are you? So Andy Kozanian owns this beautiful Armenian market. He goes back to Armenia a couple of times a year, make sure he buys all the ingredients that you might not be able to get in Los Angeles. You want to see the whole place? Yeah, I want to see the whole place. Hey, so right. follow, follow me. This shop is big, almost as big as Andy's personality. Did you like Robert De Niro of Armenia? Or? No, no. That's what no, I heard. No. That's what I heard. No, no, no. They, no, they, they like to. They like to. I don't know anything about the culture, 
besides like, I know Armenians in Ethiopia, but like what are typical Armenian ingredients? Ingredients? Yeah. Everything is Armenian, it's so beautiful. Maybe Everything, you, uh, of course, Okay, course. Yeah, right now you're just looking at some of the yeah. stuff. You got the barbecues, you got the cabbage yeah. leaves. I mean, yes. you get 150 items. Wow. That has been made in Armenia and we bring it over you here. You bring it here. You can't compare the fruit that's been grown in Armenia with sure. anybody else. Angle of the sun is totally different. Nice the water terrible. is totally yeah. different. Some Armenians came here to be farmers. They grew persimmons, they grew pomegranate. Pomegranate, of pomegranate course. has been yeah. introduced by Armenians in the US. Grapes, Fresno, 90% grown by Armenians. Our cognac is better than any French cognac. Yeah. Whatever Armenian has better than anybody. No, no, anyway. of course, we know that. <laughs> we know that. You have gone clearly the ambassador of Armenia. When I think about the Armenian flavors, the food is a combination of Asian Armenian food and the food of the diaspora. So being an Armenian it means multicultural stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We enjoy everybody's nice sure. dishes and we grab every single one with it, but it's beautiful and delicious. You're looking at the Greek olives right now, sure, it's all right. from Greece. We have the tabbouleh over here. This is from, in Uzbekistan they make it. Yeah. But you cannot think about Armenian food without thinking about lavash. You're gonna see the way lavash has been made. Look at the bread. Think about something as aging as just flour, water, and salt creates incredible bread. You can take one out of it. Show me, show me. This is like, open it up a little bit. Yeah. You open it. So all you do is drop it here. Now oh, you made it beautiful than me. That's it. Takes about 15 seconds from there to here, and you're done. Have some, grab it, they're coming out of fresh. Beautiful. We make it all day long and it's been sold out. I want to, can I taste? Go ahead, cleanest bread there is. So it's nothing in there, no preservatives, no sugar, no oil, nothing, no yeast. No yeast. It's 3,000 3, year old. This bread is delicious, delicious. Enjoy it. Was it from Armenia to Los Angeles right away? Did yeah, you go so I came in when the Soviet Union was in, in the picture. Yeah. So we ran away from a commies yeah. rule. July 21st, 1980, I arrived wow. to LA. From, from, from Armenia. Armenia. Yes. What a different, right? Different? No, it's, it's not a different. It's a totally different world. Totally too. different world, right? And you, you go look around and say, my God, such thing exists compared to what you had over there and uh, now what you see here. Totally different world. Wow, wow. We're at Papillion International Bakery in Glendale, California, and this is the home of the Armenians. Our food is considered comfort food when we made it more modern, and it also reminds you of home. We're trying to bring all the stuff our grandparents used to love, even when the times were bad, when they were broke in the Soviet Union. We took that and we made it something you can enjoy on a daily basis, and you know, it makes you feel good when you had nothing, and now it's so abundantly available. Our signature top two is Parashki Zampon Chicks. A lot of people say it's an Armenian donut, but donut is filled after it's baked or fried. Pon Chicks is fried with the stuffing in it, so it transforms what's inside of it. We also have the Ferrero Rocher in the Pon Chick, and we put Nutella all over it. So when you're biting, it's the whole candy experience in a whole different environment, which just makes it explode in your mouth. We make it fresh all day from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. So you're getting the most amazing ponchika parashki you can eat anywhere. Growing up in Armenia, I was part of the USSR, Soviet Union. I think we've seen so many black and white and so many sad grays. It's so heartwarming to see color, to see positivity. And I like to share that energy with people because colors make life just so much better. It just makes you breathe better. So the whole Armenian diaspora is held together by this one dish, lulu kebab, which is this beautiful ground meat that is cured and then you grill it over fire. No matter where you are in the world as an Armenian, you're eating lulu kebab. It's basically what meatballs are for a Swede. Same thing. Mini kebab is this very simple store in the middle of Glendale. And it's such a humble place. Overkim, he's been doing lulu kebab for over 50 years. 
He became a really good cook in the Soviet Army. It might not be the fancy French cooking school, but it got the job done. And the kebab is to die for. When did you come over from Armenia? Like, what year did you guys come? 87, September 4. Yeah. Really? Seven. Seven. Yeah. No, seven. No, no. Anyway. Yeah, seven. <laughs> plus tax. That's it. I said four plus tax. <laughs> That's brilliant. I like that. Yeah. You know. I've heard about lula kebab. What is the lula kebab? Lula, it's mean pipe. Like a pipe? Yeah, like that's why it's around. So they smoke it, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to see how to make the pipe kebab, OK? Which one, chicken or beef? You decide. It's your shop. You're the boss. Or she's the boss, but like she you're is the, boss. the boss. Yeah, yeah, I know, no, no, I know, I'm I know. Boss. I'm I know, boss. I know. <laughs> I love how you do it. It's so nice. You, you can tell you've done it so many times. It's beautiful. Were your parents both born in Armenia, or were they no, born? No, my parents were born in Egypt. Wow. You know, after Second World War, they immigrated to Armenia. And, and what about you, your parents? No, my, uh, my parents are from Armenia. Really from Armenia. Really Armenian. A.A. Hey, hey. Armenia, yeah. Armenia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, wow. Long. Really it's long. Very Beautiful. Good. Yeah. Nice. This is a perfect bite. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not you, too big. Yeah, you can make, you, you can drive and eat. You, yeah. You're not making it dirty <laughs> on yourself, you know. There's some other something. You're so eat. American. Who drives and eat? Only American drives and eat. This is so good, right? So delicious. Yeah. Very nice. When you were a kid coming up, this was your first job? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I was five, six years old. I remember uh, wrapping mini kebabs. Yeah. And getting tips from the old men. I was taking like nine bucks in tips a day. Yeah. I was like, I want a gold watch. And so I went and picked up on a 99 cent store like gold watch. I was like, hell yeah. Yeah. He's American. He knows. Like, he's American. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The skewer is puppy up. Nice. I know I'm going to love this. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, it's everything. Fresh tomatoes, beautiful rice, and then the cigar kebab. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. What about the yogurt here? What do we have here? It's not yogurt. This is a poor garlic cream. What? Not everybody make it. Oh, wow. No dairy, no, no mayonnaise, nothing. So uh, you whip it? Yeah, it's so hard. You know, if you do a mistake, it's sick watering. Woo! I've never tasted anything like this. That is beautiful. Yeah. Right? It's not often I taste something I've never, never had, right? Yeah. Little bit, take a piece of bread. Yeah. Little bit hummus, mm -hmm. like a burrito. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so clean. You described for me that Armenian culture is almost like magnet. Yeah, magnet. What do you mean with this? No, Armenians, they like find more more each other, you know, yes. the mic, it's, I don't know, it's our culture maybe, it's a blood, I don't know. Maybe because it's a small country, but big diaspora. You know, our history, sure. we got many hard times. Maybe that is makes some us to come find together, each other yes. together. Like magnet, you come together, find each other. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Thank I really you, appreciate thank you, you, okay? Chef. The one uniting factor of the entire Armenian people in the homeland, in the diaspora around the world, is the Armenian genocide. Century by century, the Armenian civilization has endured conquest. It is the 20th century that made Armenia a diaspora. In 1915, it was very clear that the Ottoman Empire was crumbling. The Turks who were trying to quell the Armenian calls for self-determination and implemented a system to cleanse the Armenian population under the pretext that basically this was a threat to the Ottoman Empire's survival. It began in ways that are too violent and vulgar to describe. Scholars attest to the fact that close to about one and a half million Armenians were killed. And this was the fragmentation grenade that created the Armenian diaspora. Survivors went to India, to Iran, China, Russia, and Lebanon, and other countries around the world. 
My people were left with nothing and they created diasporas, community centers. It is survival. The Armenian people have endured because they were able to create. This has been around for the longest time. Yeah. This is Phoenicia. This is the home hub, base? hub of the Armenian community oh, cool. in Glendale. This is Vahe is a writer, artist, a comedian. He tells these stories about the Armenian community and the diaspora. The Armenian community, they all come to Phoenicia. Salvi. Hey, Marcus. <laughs> to gather, to share stories about the old country, about their journey, Soviet Union, Lebanese, Ethiopia even. Ethiopia had to be in the house, right? You have Ethiopians right here. Oh, I right? see them. Okay. I see all the Ethiopians here, right? <laughs> Wonderful, we enjoy. The table is so beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about where are we? It's a Lebanese restaurant. But it's Lebanese Armenian. It's owned by Armenians. Owned by Armenian. Armenian. And most everybody here is Armenian. But the thing about this place is, just like all of LA, you know, everybody from every country is in yeah. LA. Every Armenian from every country is right here. So you are Armenian from Syria. Syria. From Armenia. Armenia, Armenia. <laughs> Armenian origin. Ethiopian, Armenian. Ethiopian. There's my Ethiopian. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Beirut. I grew up in, a, in an Armenian ghetto in Lebanon. Yeah, remember, these were the refugees, right? Yeah, these sure. were the genocide survivors who yeah. Absolutely. clung together for dear life. Yeah. Armenians in Los Angeles come from about 80 places. All over the world, huh? And it's the first time in history that all of these subcultures are right here living next door to each other in the same restaurant. Mind you, in the beginning, it was apprehension, you know, of who are you, how, would, how are we connected, and so on. Now you don't see that at all. How, how do we say cheers in Armenia? Genat. 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 It means to life. Genat. And by the way, nice. pass the hummus. And <laughs> like, like, we're talking in Armenia at the same time. This is poor man's food. I it's, love poor man's cooking all over the world. It's so lentils and rice and fried and onions. Oh, nice. Every Friday, this was our meal. Whoa, there's food everywhere. I love this. What is that in the middle there? Yeah. That's a Syrian concoction. It's ground walnuts, breadcrumbs, pomegranate sauce. Beautiful. Thank this is you. Armenian wine or Lebanese it wine? It is. It's Armenian wine. That's ostensibly where the first wine was made. Armenians and Georgians argue about this. You know what? Africans would argue about that, too. There you go. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> the food is so good. It is. It is. I love this place. You're Armenian, Armenia, Armenian. What culture do you feel like you belong to in terms of food? Well, my parents are from Armenia, so a lot of the food is affiliated with the Soviet Union and sort of Eastern European, yeah. you know, cabbage and beets and potatoes and all of that. Sauerkraut, all that. You were born in L.A., you have Ethiopian origin and Armenian. Burbure was a staple in our home. I love that. Yes, yes. There was a, a marriage of the spices of the different diasporas that we belong sure. to. It's interesting because in many ways it's almost like a double identity, right? Very it's a, much. You know, it's a dual immigration, migration. Very much. But when you talk to an Ethiopian person, back home means going back to Ethiopia. For you, does that mean go back to Lebanon or does it mean to go to Armenia? That's a million dollar question. Exactly. And the answer is always changing. And it can be both. You know, for some things you seek Lebanon, and, uh -huh. or Syria, and for other things, you definitely seek Armenia. There are people who know nothing except the food, yes. and that defines them, hey, which is fine with me. As an artist, how does being an Armenian express itself in your work? When I do comedy, a lot of people tell me, you should concentrate on how funny the differences are between the communities, you know? What is funny is how similar we are, but we think that we're different. And, and Vahe was one of the first that let us laugh at ourselves. Because, you know, you're a refugee, you're an immigrant, yeah. oh, gee, how sad. Yeah. Vahe pointed yeah. out to us how funny we are, how unique we are, how I say something one way, and she says something another way, and yeah. sometimes we look at each other and we go, wait a minute, <laughs> you know? And, and he just kind of held up a mirror to us. For somebody that does not know Armenian, what are some of the, um, the characters that we know, like, all Armenians are? 
entrepreneurial and extremely resilient. I think maybe it was because of the genocide. We are all survivors, and that mentality of survivor mentality mm -hmm. brings us together like a family. So if I see an Armenian in Amsterdam, if yeah. I see an Armenian in or in South America or yeah. South Africa, for that matter, that's right. it, we're family. The genocide decimated more than a million and a half people. It killed culture, it killed a way of life. And so it's both very understandable and also very unfortunate that it took two generations yeah. for people to pick themselves up by their feet. But you can't underestimate the impact of devastation and loss and dislocation like that. More and more, though, this culture is blending in the most amazing ways. That's beautiful. You know, when Vaya and I walked over here, I saw that the Armenian consulate is across the street. But I believe that the Phoenician is probably like the real <laughs> consulate, right? You run over there to get your stamp, or you come back here to get it done, right? <laughs> In Glendale, you have institutions like Phoenicia that brings the whole Armenian diaspora together. But in the last few years, you started to see small places popping up that bring in Armenian culture and food to a whole new audience. Alisa Smarian is an amazing woman. She's the head chef, the head server, and the owner of Heritage Eatery, this beautiful modern cafe in the center of Glendale. We've been open less than two years. Oh, wow, congratulations. Thank you. We wanted to give a highlight yeah. to uh, recipes from grandma and mom, but in a way where it's gourmet. A little bit more modern. Yes. But it's really inspired from back home. Yes. Right? Beautiful, stunning. We have eggplant caviar. Do you have a little bit of paprika in here? Yes, right? it's paprika. This is kamat matsun. It's strained yogurt topped mm. with mulberry sauce that comes all the way from Armenia. It's so delicious. It is, thank you. That's the last piece you're gonna get. I'm gonna finish it. You know, I've learned about this incredible yes. di diaspora, right? Your grandmother, your mom is from... My mom was born in Beirut, Lebanon. Mm -hmm. My dad was born in Damascus, Syria. I basically speak four languages. Mm -hmm. Of course, I speak Armenian. Armenian, and English. English, yeah. and because I lived in Russia, uh -huh. I grew up in Russia, I speak Russian. My first language... Ah, пожалуйста. Добро пожаловать. And the fourth language was Turkish, mm -hmm. believe it or not. And who's your customer today? Armenian community? Is anyone in LA? So we get people from every culture because Glendale is a melting pot. I would say half of Glendale is a melting pot because I would say like 70% is Armenian. Yeah, well, first language <laughs> spoken yeah. in Glendale is Armenian Absolutely. and English. For non Armenian, <laughs> I'm like, mm, maybe not a melting pot, but melting pot from the Armenian diaspora. Yes, yes. yes. With Armenian food, you will have the heavier dishes that are very often kebabs, heavier on meats. Then the other thing is you have almost a vegan element, which is the bulgur and the pilafs and the, you know, the rice culture. It's bright, it's floral, super, super delicious. One dish that we're gonna make, it's called rapama. 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 And it's a, it goes back centuries. Armenian dish? Armenian dish. Rushki dish? What? No, it's a very, very traditional Armenian okay. dish. Okay, just so checking. It's usually done for a festive occasion, whether it's a wedding or New Year's or Christmas. So basically, like, a beautiful big pumpkin. Pre-cooked rice. Yeah. Of course, Dried apricots, fruit. Armenian mm -hmm. apricots. Raisins. Raisins. I Another like ingredient that we use is Aleppo chili peppers. Again, Aleppo. So now you're going dad, across the border. That side is from Syria. Lots of honey. Yeah. Fresh, cracked Armenian walnuts. And I'll put it in the oven. Uh, OK. Elisa, can you put it in the oven, please? Elisa, <laughs> how are you? All right. You got it? It's heavy. I don't speak English. So. Oh, you don't speak English? Yes. OK. <laughs> Elisa, let's do this. An hour and a half. She speaks Russian and oh. Armenian. There we go. All right. Wow. That's awesome. I've never seen a dish like this. This is stunning. It's a beautiful dish. Do and... we put pomegranate on this? Yes. OK, I'm going to make it rain with pomegranate. Yes, nice. please. I don't know if you know, Armenians will crack a pomegranate when it's a wedding engagement, a new home, yeah. a baby is born. This is Something. delicious. This Isn't is good? Absolutely delicious. Well, I'm glad you like it. And it's kind of communal because no one can kind of like eat this by themselves. Yeah. I'm gonna, we'll I'm gonna, give are we it gonna to pass the, it around? Yeah, to the guys. Yeah, does anyone want to try? Have you had it before? Yes, of course. It's so delicious. I've never had this dish. How about you? 
No. Thank you, you're my people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody else have had it before. <laughs> what does that mean to be able to be more open and celebrated but also by non-Armenians? I think as a woman, as a restaurateur, someone who is a minority, someone who came to this country yeah. as an immigrant, the success story is when you cook something from your heritage. Mm. I love the idea that, oh my God, you yeah. really like that you finished it. What a great story also to tell your kids. You can come as an immigrant and work really, really hard and together as a family create something that is bigger than yourself that now other people are reaching out to, so. I hope so. Yeah, no, I mean, this is awesome to put <laughs> this together. So. Thank you, Marcus. I spent most of my time in Los Angeles in Glendale, which is really like the center of the Armenian community. But to see how big the Armenian influence, culture, and community is, I also branched out to San Fernando Valley, Burbank, and Pasadena. Hi, my name is Sarkisi Gazarian, and we're here at the Monster Factory in Pasadena, California. My name is Evelina. <laughs> oh, I, I'm nervous. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I can't. Hello. I can't. <laughs> Monta is a Middle Eastern European specialty dish. It's a boat-shaped dumpling, which consists of just dough that's rolled out, cut into little squares, a piece of ground beef put into each square. Everything that we make every day is made from scratch, it's made fresh. I put the meat and she pinches, and then as soon as I'm done putting all the meats, I pop in and I start pinching while she starts lining them up in the tray. When the dough is cooked to a crisp, the beef gets nice and juicy. Every single day we prepare about 10,000 pieces of manta, all by hand. All by hand. We've been eating manta in our home all the time since I grew up. We started this business 14 years ago. It was wholesale. I took over four and a half years ago and opened it to the public. That was Jack's idea, to open the doors to the public. He was saying, Mom, you know what? This is very good food. I want all the generations to know about this. 90% of the diaspora are familiar with the dish itself, uh, whether it's one style or another. A lot of people like it just plain to eat it like a finger food. A lot of people like it plain with just the yogurt sauce. But here at the Monte Factory itself, we serve it either tomato, tomato hot and spicy, and or garlic cream. There's so many different variations. There's a place in Glendale who specializes in a different style. It's not Monte, it's called Khankali. Khankali uh, is our Georgian Armenian. There you go. It's Georgian Armenians that make the Khankali. She wants to give everyone their credit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the cool part of living here in Los Angeles is that you, no matter where you go, you're able to find that traditional food that you're craving from back home. How are you? Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. What's up, man? How are you? Great. Nice Thank to be here. Yeah. Arthur Gregorian is this young kid that used to work for Nancy Silverton. Nancy's an icon in American food scene, specifically in Los Angeles. Originally, my intentions were to excel in classic French cuisine. Yeah, I mean, you work with one, one of the best ever, Nancy, yeah. right? Yeah, the queen. Down in <laughs> Mozart. And then how did the Texas barbecue style come into play? All it took was a trip to Texas with my girlfriend. Okay. We decided to go try Franklin's barbecue. Yeah. And it ended up being so good that right, I decided to change my ideas that I had for my career. Arthur has really become a barbecue master. He throws these secret dinners in the backyard of his parents' house. Well, how do you do your events now? So I mainly do it back here, so I'll have like 15 people back here just sitting at the bar right yeah. here. So it's like a secret restaurant yeah. in the back. Yeah, it's kind of like a speakeasy that. in that yard. I so. love <laughs> that. And he's really figured out this way to do it in a way that both honors the barbecue culture, but also his heritage about being Armenian American. What is Armenian barbecue Texas style in Southern California? What does it taste like? What does it look like? It's mainly the rubs yeah. and uh, the techniques. All right. 
right, so what do you want us to start cooking with? Let me walk you through the barbecue sauce real quick. Right here, it's just the base. It's uh, ketchup, balsamic vinegar, and champagne vinegar. So you got a little bit of that LA slash French in you, right? That's yeah, you. exactly. And then we're gonna add some more acid. What's that, molasses? Uh, this is uh, pomegranate molasses. Of course, and Armenian was the exactly. one who brought the pomegranate too. <laughs> See? To California, I've yes. done my... Pomegranates, know. figs, we all brought that stuff yes. here. And then this right here is, this mm. comes from Nancy, Calabrian chili. Nice. So these come from Italy. Nice, beautiful. You know what this reminds me of? The Armenian diaspora. Yeah. All these places. Exactly, it's like a melting pot. <laughs> and it goes pot. back, exactly. <laughs> I need somebody to taste. You get VIP treatment. Yeah, you go here, we're gonna taste what Unc did. It's a little bit spicy, be careful. This is all Armenian barbecue sauce. I'll give it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a tough crowd. <laughs> we like, right? Nice. So I'll give you this end to try first. Yeah. That's where all the, the flavors are. <laughs> <flavors are. laughs> wow. This is really, really delicious. It's moist. You know, it's hard to get the meat that juicy, but you really succeeded in that. If you ever want a taster, I mean, a professional taster, <laughs> I come out, I come through anytime. Oh, I feel honored. <laughs> Who taught you how to cook? Uh, it all started with my grandmother, honestly. Yeah. I mean, uh, my parents, growing up, you know, immigrant families, they mm. gotta work all the time. Yeah. So uh, growing up, I mainly spent time with my grandmother. Oh, so. nice. So if Nancy was his mentor to understand the modern kitchen, his grandmother is his real mentor. So we're gonna make dolmas? Yes, dolma. dolma. I have the opportunity to actually roll some dolmas with her. She doesn't speak a lot of English. Who taught her how to cook? Was her mom, her aunt? My mom. Your mom, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Show me, I wanna know how to do it. That's opal basil. Opal basil. I love the amount of herbs in there. <laughs> She's saying you did a good job. Thank you, <laughs> Do I have enough meat or not enough? No. Good, good. Okay, good. Being in grandma's presence and watching Arthur and her back and forth, they have this really close, beautiful relationship. Something I can relate to. I grew up with my grandmother being the biggest influence on me. So watching Arthur and his grandmother working together, it's really special. When you were a kid, did you and your sisters and brothers, did you help grandma with this? Uh, mainly me. Yeah. <laughs> I would always be by her, watching her, doing yeah. everything, and whatever question I would have, she would always answer and help me with the techniques and everything, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> I love that. I have dolmas there and dolmas here. Yeah, and dolmas everywhere. Dolmas, dolmas everywhere. Dolmas everywhere. <laughs> Ready? Every time I'm yeah. out to make good. Yeah. You taught him well. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing me your culture. <laughs> me Beautiful. Very happy. Me too. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> okay. You do three times in Ethiopia. Okay. Okay. Ah, no, Thank it's you, awesome. He's <laughs> super talented. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Arthur had really followed the traditional route that his grandmother gave him, but he's also taking his own Armenian-American experience and put those two experiences into his food. Armin is telling the Armenian-American story in the most iconic way. He's going from lulu kebab to taco. What can be more Los Angeles cuisine than that? With that comes a place like Smorgasbord. It makes total sense. His audience meets there. It's a marketplace that is popular. And his dishes are clever enough to fit in next to the barbecue place, next to the Korean taco, next to X, Y, and so on. And those are also some of the things that we love about Los Angeles. How long have you been here now? Uh, Schmorgisberg's about a year now. A year? Uh, you want to go through the system? Maybe yeah, I'll show yeah, you how operations course. are done. We have a very eclectic bunch. I love it. We all go back, too. Danny and Tall and myself, along with Sapoon, 
we all used to do ramen together. Of course. Danny's Vietnamese. This is Kevin. He's my neighbor, actually. Oh, what's up, Kevin? <laughs> Marcus, nice to meet you. Yeah. Kevin's mom actually taught me how to make the masa. And is Kevin Armenian? No, Kevin is Mexican. His family. Kevin, your family's from Durango? Mexico City. Mexico City, Mexico City yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, look at your staff here. They're learning about Armenian culture, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You're actually passing on what American Armenian today, 2019, what that's about. I want to go deeper. I want to know the meat <laughs> is, is over here. Yeah. But to make a good taco, yeah. the tortilla is, is key, proper, the yes. masa is key. Masa is key. So I want to go over and talk to the engineer over here. Let's go after you, chef. Miss Patricia is actually knocking out the tortillas. Okay, cool. This is yeah. like the MVP. She's so fast that she puts everybody else to shame. Where in Mexico are you from? Jalisco. Jalisco. I love Jalisco. I love Guadalajara. Show me. Mama, Let's do it. You got to show me. You and me together. We're going to do it together. <laughs> All right. We go down. We press. Yes. No, 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 no. no. Up, 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 up. And then we go back. Twice trap or one trap? Oh, nice. So she preps out anywhere from 500 to 600 tortillas. Wow. Yeah. And, um, no, 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 no. Nice. Wait. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> Just shut up. MVP. MVP, definitely. All right. Thank you. Okay. Gracias. All right. Get a picture? I see you. Of course. Later on, my dude. Okay. Later on, I come back. Okay. I got you. I see you on the TV. Okay, I see you. <laughs> Listen, I want to order. What are we going to order? What are we going to order? What are we going to have? Do you want to make tacos? Yes. What so are we doing? Hummus in the bottom? Yes. I mean, this is just delicious flavors. Yeah. This is just great flavors. And right before we send it out, yes. Chef, pick it up. And what do we have? A little suma? A little, just a nice little drizzle. To give it a nice, nice little beautiful. color to finish. Great. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's good, right? It's, it's fantastic. Only in America can you have an Armenian taco, right? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, you're in business with your parents as well, right? What Mom, do you think about this? I showed them the line from last week's service, yeah, yeah. and they were geeked out. Like, nice. it was the most exciting thing for them to see. But I love that, that your level of pride and passion really come through. I love it. You know, it, it's for me, to be able to do this is honestly something that I wanted to do to satisfy a lot yeah. of my parents. And I want them to retire. That's the one reason that I work so hard is because exactly. I want mom and dad to hang but out. That's beautiful, you know? That's, they're, my, they're my number one fans, man, at the end of the day. Nice. Here, let me show you something we do traditionally. Let's do Armenian traditions. Grab one. Whoa, so, whoa, 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 now you, this is not a tortilla. No, 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 this is now not. you change. This, I, I, I gotta give you the roots. <laughs> I love them. We grab this, a oh, piece nice. of meat and just like wrap it with oh, the lavash and just God. eat it. This is the real deal. This is the way to do it. Yes, chef. Wow. Cheers. The breaking bread. Nice, that is breaking bread. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. That's yummy, right? Mm. The spices. I think you got another taco going. <laughs> you gotta use the lava from up. Damn. <laughs> it's so good. Mmm. So I'm up at dawn, driving on this dusty road into the hills of Altadena. For a minute, I don't realize that I'm just outside Los Angeles. I finally arrived at this magical ranch built by an Armenian in the 1940s. And I'm here for one of the oldest and most traditional meals in Armenian culture, the Hush Feast. Hey, hey, how's it going? What's up? How are you? How you doing? Good. Ara is this typical LA kid. Like, he's a surfer, he's a skateboarder, he's got an Armenian-American cookbook coming out. He does Armenian cooking classes in Armenia. So he really has his feet in both countries, right? So right there, we got the khash. The khash. Khash. The khash. You gotta, you gotta, yeah, you gotta yeah, give yeah. it the Okay. Yes. It's cow foot soup. Yes. Back in the day when they didn't have a lot, you had to use every part of the animal. Yeah. You take this the cow's foot, you'd singe the hair, pluck it, and then you boil it for about four to five hours. One of these best times I've ever had this, I was on the top of Aragats, which is uh, one of the highest peaks in Armenia. Yeah. And they serve you chash. And it's this empowering feeling where you're eating this cow foot soup on the tallest mountain, you know, one yeah, of the highest yeah. points. And it's, it was an insane moment for me. Many of the younger generation Armenians who grew up in LA, they actually never been to Armenia itself. 
So they really grew up with this idea that was told to them by their grandparents or their parents. But more than ever, they started to go back to Armenia, back to their roots. I grew up in an Egyptian-Armenian household. My dad was uh, Armenian from Jerusalem. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is Armenian. And then I come to realize that most of the stuff actually wasn't Armenian. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't find that out until I went to Armenia for the first time. Mm. You're an LA kid, right? Yeah, born and, and raised. Yeah, and then you're like, you're flying in to Armenia. Was it a little bit of a culture shock for you? You know what, it's kind of crazy. I was told the first time you go to Armenia, you get this, you get this feeling, the sense of being home. Yeah. You know, and I was like, yeah. there's no way. But honestly, the first time I stepped foot, I got that feeling. Going through Armenia started getting me to question like, what actually was Armenian cuisine? Mm. What Armenians in Armenia mm. were eating constantly. And what we found was nothing short of amazing. You were diving into like old school Armenia. You're on, almost on this like journey on finding out what is the OG sort of Armenian cuisine. That takes time. That's like almost historical work. Exactly. Hash has to start at 6 o'clock in the morning and goes all day with a lot of food, but even more drinking. And I'm talking shots. Normally, we would be pounding 20 to 25 shots by 10 or 11 o'clock. 20 to 25 shots? Yeah. Good to see you. In the morning. Yeah. Nice. To the goodness of the light and all of us here together. Adios. Cheers. 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 How do you guys keep Armenia alive right here? I think in L.A. it's not that difficult. <laughs> it's almost like there are more Armenians in Glendale than there are in, in Armenia. Ar yeah. Yeah, you know, it, there's a, a little uh, area in Armenia called Glendale Hills. Oh, yeah. no. Yes. There's a big population of Armenians in Glendale, Arizona, too. And yeah. I feel like people just got the wrong memo. Yeah. They landed, they were in Glendale. They're like, no, <laughs> you, you missed oh, yeah, it. Awesome. Like, They're going to buy next Glendale. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. With kash, you're kind of seasoning it to your own palate and enjoyment. You know, to each his own, right? Yeah. You add a little bit of garlic, salt. I, we do Aleppo pepper. They don't yeah. really do Aleppo pepper. I do a little bit of lemon juice as well. Yeah. I'm definitely adding the garlic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You crack in the lavash. Yeah. What a fun way of eating. This is probably one of the most perennial and ancient dishes. You can find a reference to khash in a 12th century medical encyclopedia. This comes way before the genocide and the official diaspora. This being something that the Armenian people have looked to for comfort, for healing, whether it's to cure your hangover. Mind yeah. you, some Armenian men swear by khash. Of course, they, they drink throughout. I think we need to, we're overdue for a toast. Cheers. Cheers. I traveled to Armenia recently, and, and manta, which I mm -hmm. thought was a very, very traditional Armenian dish, it's like little dumplings with meat in it. Mm -hmm. I grew up knowing that as Armenian. Mm -hmm. I went there and I taught a class. I was like, we're going to make manta. And five of the students were like, what's manta? And I was like, what's that? where am I? But see, I had the exact opposite experience. I was born in Armenia, mm -hmm. moved here when I was 10, right after the Soviet Union collapsed. Mm -hmm. And what I associated as Armenian food was so different from what L.A. presented as Armenian yeah, food right. because mm -hmm. L.A. is so special in that you have Armenians from all over the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, and so it was yeah. my first time having Manta, and I was like, what is this? Yeah. Right? So you're it getting, was the... like, United States of Armenia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And I think what makes L.A. so special is mm -hmm. that, that you have this global yeah. Armenian stage to have all kinds of Armenian experiences. You get the influence. Would you say that... LA is home now? Yeah. Well, home will always be Armenia. Yeah. And once you step foot there, you re understand that, you get that feeling. I'm a born and raised LA guy. Yeah. I love LA, LA is home. Mm. But Armenia is where I'm from. Yeah. You know, and you're never, that, that's never gonna yeah. depart. Yeah. It's uh, amazing. Toast is to the hands of the master that prepared this lovely yeah. hash. Yeah. There's yeah. a yeah. very yeah. old yeah. saying that uh, when you eat the fruit, do not forget who planted the tree. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So to all our ancestors, toasting yeah. the the timeless eternal tradition of Armenia. Cheers. Genat. Genat. From my last night in LA, I'm back in Glendale. So I'm in front of this kind of random flower shop, and then I knock on the door, and I get invited into this other world, like filled with 
art, food, fashion. Hey, Marcus. What's up, man? Hello, How are what's you? Up? Good to see you. Welcome. Hi. It almost looks like a Hollywood set in a way, right? You go from room to room. There are creatives all gathering, all Armenian, and just enjoying life together. My mother, Mary Kay. Hi, Marcus. Hi, hi. So nice. Hi, hi, hi. This, I love this space. Yeah, hey, welcome to our spot. Where's the flower shop? You're right. in the flower shop. Yeah. My partner, Chef welcome. ST. How are you? Great. Nice nice to have you. Here. Boys. Oh. I want to introduce you to my friend. This is the stuff, right? Nice. Yeah. And we got a little tartar over here. Yeah, this is like a classic chikofte. Yeah. Uh, chef, what do we do with this? It's like our version of our steak tartar. Yeah. Nice. Some crele. Yeah. Cool. And that come to Armenia through Lebanon, yeah, you yeah, think? Yeah, 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 yeah. What else are we making today? We're making octopus sharma. Octopus sharma? Yeah. There you go. So I, I still eat it for five hours, so it's not too silky. Yeah. But it holds. And then we're just going to quick char these then to get yes. some char on them, some flavor some on them. Some crisp. Nice. That's the duck? Correct. The duck lulay? Yep. It looks nice. So I think we adopted this from Iran. Yeah. And then what we ended up doing is going French and incorporating, um, like, the duck meat and the duck fat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys are smart. You know the fat content. Yeah, But yeah. the duck is a better fit, maybe, you yeah. know what I mean? But your heritage is from Cyprus, right? My grandfather went to Cyprus and married a Cypriot. Yeah. So I'm a quarter Cypriot. Okay. And then he did, that in he, he did what Armenians do and yeah. stole her and took her to Armenia. Took her back. You know? Okay. One of the things that I think Armenians do really well, you guys have this old, old culture that's kind of like, yes, it's Armenia. Uh -huh. But this feels also very young and forward thinking, yeah, right? So yeah. this is borderline graffiti, this is house music, it's all young expressions, yeah, right? Yeah. How did that come about? We're still being Armenian, but yeah. the Armenian of now is an Armenian that's left from Armenia, yeah. gone to Lebanon, visited cousins in France, yeah. came to America, figured it out, and now here we are. Yeah. We've been pretty much like running, you know? Yeah. And we never stayed somewhere long enough to be able to go from catching up to thriving. So yeah. like we've been in America for like 45 years now. Yeah. So like now we're kind of like pioneering stuff. Yeah, you know? cool. Marcus, so you spent like the last couple of days with some like other people, right? Beautiful. I've seen so much of the culture and I know it's just in a week, you can't see everything, but you feel the pride, you feel like the hustle, how hard people are working. Everyone is so patriotic about the place. Uh, even if the kids haven't even been there, they still have this very clear sense of uh, place. I belong to this culture. Cheers. Welcome to the family, really man. Really nice. Thank you. You want to begin now? The duck lule. Although Michael K and FT are two young Armenian boundary pushers, really the core meaning of the part of it is to bring young Armenian culture together to learn about the traditions from the old country and from what the parents gave them. Chef ST and I have kind of found a way of creating modern renditions of the food from our past. So I want to um, propose a toast to my parents. You know, we're that new Armenian generation um, of people that like have the luxuries that we have in America because they're the ones who really sacrifice. So cheers, mom and dad, and to each and every one of your parents. Nice. Cheers. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh -huh. Food is definitely the way that Armenians keep telling their stories, right? They preserved it and today are telling a modern story. And the final chapter is not written yet. It's an evolving story. Okay, so I just want to say um, thank you so much to Michael and Michael's parents for inviting us and to all the chefs that work really, really hard. This is an amazing space for me to learn about Glendale's Armenian culture. So to that, I want to say, Tukhov. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. So Armenians have been pushed around all over the world but yet they come back together here in Los Angeles and created their own world, their own culture. And now the Armenian community has finally found permanent residence.